Hey gang, and welcome back to the Stud Pack House Build. It's good to see you. On our last two videos, you saw us dig out almost five feet from below where I'm standing all the way down to the clay, and we got rid of that sandy, mushy, wet soil where there is no way it would support any type of structure. Then we brought in 34 truckloads, 12 yards each, of select fill. Now what this is, it's 60% clay and 40% sand. And it doesn't just come out of that pit that we visited already mixed up like this. That excavator operator, he digs some clay, he digs some sand, and he mixes it together in that 60-40% ratio while he's waiting on other trucks, and then he stockpiles it. Our stockpile was tested by the soil engineer before we even brought it on site, and we are good to go. This thing's gonna hold up this garage forever. But holding things up is not the issue. The issue is this pad is holding things in. What do I mean by that? Well, we got quite a low spot right here. And as you can see, it's pretty muddy. We don't wanna be working in this mud while we're setting forms, digging our footings, have the plumber come in, do all his work. We want it as dry as can be. So we thought we'd use this sunny, cold, windy day to dial in this pad a little bit better and make it as flat as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect. As much as I want it to be perfect, I know that it can't, but we're gonna do the best we can. Now we could get down on our hands and knees, army crawl, use a level, get this thing dialed in the way we want. But you know what, Jordan? I thought we'd use some of that money you want in Vegas and buy ourselves a brand new tool that's gonna to be an absolute game changer on this entire project. So I bought a Spectra Precision LL300N rotary laser for this job site. Got the rotary laser, a tripod, even comes with batteries. There's our sensor and our pole. Let's get this thing powered up and fired up. All right, check it out. This thing is all ready to go. Basically, all we had to do was put in the included 4D batteries. Power button right there. It's going to self-level, and once it starts spinning, it is ready to go. So I really want to know how much higher this pad is above our sidewalk in our street. So why don't we go set this up over there, shoot the sidewalk, shoot the pad, and get that number. All right, we have the tripod and the laser set up on the sidewalk because that's what we want our slab to be higher than. As long as water flows this way to the sidewalk, it's gonna hit the sidewalk, flow that way to the city storm drain. So I'm gonna come around to this side of it. This thing's pretty simple. We're gonna power it up right here. And it's going to self-test mode. It's gonna self-level. And once that spins, it's ready to go. So I guess we got it pretty well dialed in right away. All right, we got our detector. This is a volume control, it's pretty low. If it's on the high, you wouldn't be able to hear me. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. I'm gonna get it perfectly even with the laser. It's gonna tell me up or down. I even got a scale on the back that I can see wants me to go up. All right, gang, now that we have our baseline, what I mean by that, the laser is about four foot nine above the sidewalk, and we've got it dialed in right here on our pole. So I'm gonna walk back to the pad and see how much higher we are than the sidewalk. And this pole is gonna help us do that. I've got the receiver right here, and as long as we're even with the sidewalk, I think we're gonna be okay, because remember, we're gonna put about four or five inches on top of the pad, and that's gonna get us four or five inches above the sidewalk, which is above the drain on the sidewalk. So we're gonna be good and we're gonna have good drainage. Let's check it out and see what we have. All right, we're at the front left-hand corner of the garage indicated by the pink paint on our sewer pipe over there. And that's facing the garage from the street. And I know I'm gonna have to move this indicator down and I don't wanna have to do any math in my head. So I'm just gonna put a piece of green frog tape right there. It's about four foot nine. And then as I lower this, we'll have a visual indication of exactly how much higher the pad is. All right, I'm gonna start moving the receiver down and pick up our laser beam. Uh, no, I'm not. Where'd it go? Let's go see if we lost battery. <laughs> okay, here we go. Take 17. But why is it doing all that right now? Is it possible? I'm just throwing this out there, that it's bouncing off the phone and the glass and giving me false readings. Move the phone around, like, see if you can make it happen again, like bounce it off the glass. I don't know, man, that's weird. It's definitely new Shouldn't enough. be getting any reading when I'm four inches higher than the beam, but it, it definitely was. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna start moving the receiver down and that's gonna tell us how much higher than the sidewalk we are with our pad. We're right, gonna keep on going, All right? There, lock it in. About four and a half inches higher right here. Let's go check out the other corners. All right, now we're at the front right corner. Let's see where we are. Perfect, about three and a half higher right here. Let's check the back. 
All right, on this back corner, remember, I always put this back at my benchmark with the frog tape so I, I know I'm right with the laser at the sidewalk. And this one's right there. This side right here, this point, is even with the sidewalk or level with the sidewalk. Nice. One more corner, let's check it out. And boom. I feel like we're higher, I'm gonna lower this. Perfect. Right there, three and a half, just like that other corner. Not bad, guys. All right, so we don't forget those measurements. We don't have to pull out the stick again. I'm just gonna put them right here on the dirt. This corner was plus 4.5 inches. This corner, plus 3.5 inches. Pretty nice penmanship, huh, Jordan? I like that. <laughs> Back here in this corner, I'm just gonna put a big zero, because that's what it's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, come on. All right. <laughs> that's what's it is. And our last one, three and a half again. Cool, man. Now what's our next step, Jordan? <laughs> I don't know. We've never done this before. <laughs> All right, while we had the laser out, we went ahead and marked nine points on our pad for the new garage. And basically this side, we're within two and a half inches of being flat. Three and a half, four, three and a half, six is our high spot. But over here in this corner, we have a low spot. They came out at zero on the receiver, which means right here where I'm standing is the same elevation as the sidewalk. But we're gonna take care of that, and here's how we're gonna do it. We have to come in here and dig all our grade beams, two and a half foot deep, that's gonna be filled with concrete, it's gonna support our two-story building. And the material that we're gonna be removing is that expensive select fill, $150 for one truckload. And we're gonna use that material that we dig out of the grade beams, use it right here, just in this corner, and build this up a little bit so we don't have to pay extra money for extra concrete to build this up. We're gonna use the select fill to build it up instead. All right, now that we have our head wrapped around this pad and we know it's gonna work, we're getting closer to start setting some form work. But we just can't start driving stakes in the ground. We have to know where to put our structure. The plans are very specific, but sometimes it's pretty hard. You can get a surveyor out here to mark all the corners, but we're gonna do it the old school way. Now our plans say this side of the fence is the property line. Well, the survey says that. We actually had this surveyed. A lot of you were asking questions about that, but check this out. We got the white picket fence and the six foot wooden fence and there's a little dog leg. So yes, that wooden fence is about a foot and a half on Jordan's property. We'll deal with that later. It's not in our way right now. But back to this picket fence. If we simply pull a measurement here and in the back, our building's not gonna be where it's supposed to be because this thing is going like this, the whole length. Now, yes, we have some dirt piled against it, but trust us, it was like that before we brought the bulldozers in here. It sure was. Now, we can't measure from the street because the street is not a 90 degree angle to this property line. And we can't measure off the house because it's probably worse than the fence. <laughs> so in order to make sure our building is parallel with this property line, here's what we're gonna do. That stake on the picket fence, the last one by the wooden fence is straight. So is the one by the road. So we're gonna come off of each one of those one foot with a stake or something pull a dry line all the way across, that's gonna be a foot off the property line, then we'll measure from the dry line five feet to our building line. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, and we'll use our eyes to double check everything because we can yeah. head down to the street, sight down that string line, and see if we're parallel. I mean, we'll have Absolutely. a pretty good idea. Yeah, it's gonna be within, I'd say half an inch, quarter inch where it's supposed to be. I hope so. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> And just like that, there is our dry line. Now we made sure we went down and cut off any twigs or branches that were in the way so that this thing is dead straight because it's gonna be our reference. And remember, it's a foot off of our property line. How do we know that? On the survey, the back side of this post or the top rail is the property line. You can even see the surveyor's tape right here indicating the same and there's even a stake out of the picture that shows us exactly where the property line is so we know we're good there. Let's lay out the building. Now we're gonna reference our plans, and as you can see from this pole right here, which we just showed you, we're gonna go back 64 feet, eight and 11 sixteenths to the corner of our building. My question is why? Why can't it be 65 feet or 64 feet, nine inches? But we're gonna go with that because this building in relationship to this building have to be exact because they're gonna get tied together physically with the bridge. We're gonna double check all that later, but for now, let's remember that number, 64, eight, and 11, and make a mark on our pink string that we pulled as our dry line. There we 
There's the front of your garage, bud. Right on, little Sharpie mark? <laughs> yep. So what you're telling me is that we're turning that little Sharpie mark into an entire slab? Yeah, just imagine that's how the Egyptians started with the pyramids, right? <laughs> So we're gonna establish some batter boards. You've all seen these on construction sites. Maybe you didn't know what they were called, but they're called batter boards, just like a baseball batter. I've heard them called corner boards before. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. There's probably a bunch of names. So batter boards or corner boards are real simple. It's just gonna be a horizontal board here. We're gonna make the top of this board, the top of our slab. Other people do it different ways, but that's what we're gonna do. Then we're gonna have one here, even with the top of our slab. And these are gonna be reference points where we're gonna put our string and then that string is gonna represent the edges of our foundation. But before we can put these up, we need some stakes. We need 12 in total, so let's go get the circular saw and make ourselves some stakes. Not a bad for eyeballing it, huh? Corner to corner. All right, let's do a couple more and we can go set these. All right, we've got our stakes cut, and now we're gonna dry them in the ground. And we don't have to be very precise with this part at all because we're gonna make up for that and be extremely precise and exact when we put down our strings. Now our batter boards need to be back away from the actual edge of the building. And I, I like that right there. I'm just gonna lay that on the ground. And remember, it doesn't have to be precise. And we're gonna dry these two stakes there and there. Cool. All right, now that we have our three stakes in, it's time to attach the batter boards. And remember, we said the top of this board is gonna be the top of our form. That's the same elevation. A lot of people are gonna do it a different way. That's just how we're gonna do it on the stud pack house. But how are we gonna get this perfectly where we want it on all four corners? Well, we're gonna use our laser. Let's go check it out. All right, we put the laser in the driveway. We got kind of afraid of it being out here on the sidewalk. We thought somebody was gonna hit it with their car, but I've got our indicator set up and we're dead even with the laser beam. You can hear the indicator tone. And I put a piece of frog tape right here at the top of this indicator bracket. Now Jordan wants the slab nine inches higher than the sidewalk. So all we have to do is lower this nine inches down from our tape mark. And then when we bring this back up, now the bottom of the stick is gonna be nine inches above the sidewalk and we can use this to set all the batter boards, making sure that slab is gonna be perfectly flat and nine inches above the sidewalk. Nine inches isn't like a specific no. number, you know, it's right. more so just kind of what we're working with. Yeah. We think nine inches over the course of the driveway is enough to give us some nice slopage, so for some nice drainage, right? We are gonna have to do some landscaping later on, but nine inches is in double digits, so it's not too tall. Yep. But it works real well with our pad that we got, so. Yeah. And the plans say the slab should be 12 inches higher than the street or 12 inches higher than the surrounding grade. So it's that latter phrase we're gonna use. We know we're 12 inches higher than everything else around us because of how low it was and how much we built it up with this select fill. Right on. Cool. So I'm going to hold this rod plumb. There's a little spirit level on the top of the receiver right there. I'm going to hold it plumb and in line with our laser. And then Rad's going to mark the bottom right there, Rad. And so that mark is the top of our slab, nine inches above the sidewalk. Nice. All right. All right, gang, all of our batter boards are installed. Now it's time to start doing our building strings on the edges of our slab, our layout. That's gonna define the edges of the slab. So remember, we're just gonna come off of this dry line, four foot this way, and make a mark on that board. That mark will be five foot from our property line because remember, this dry line is a foot away from the property line. And how are we gonna do that? I'm just gonna plumb down with a level. I don't wanna touch the dry line. I wanna get it plumb. And then we're gonna hook this tape on the back of the level and Rad's gonna make a mark on our batter board at four feet when I say go. All right guys, we got our mark. Rad just putting a screw right there where he marked it, right above that little arrow. 
and that's going to be our string line. That is our slab right there. So we put that at an angle so the string doesn't ride up on it and throw off our measurement. It's always going to be at the bottom just like that. So this string represents the right hand building line against the property line. So let's pull it back to that batter board, get it the same distance off our dry line, and this side of the building will be done. Do you remember getting frustrated at me for how long it used to take me to tie my shoes? A little bit. <laughs> I like that. Cool. Nice. All right, now that we've got the right side established, now we've got to get the left side established, and it's simply a matter of going to our blueprints, and it's 28 foot, 4 inches away. All we've got to do is measure it to those other batter boards and lay that string. Let's Easy do it. peasy. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, gang, so we're using this tape measure that's super long, and it's got this hook on the end. And that's not going to give us the most accurate reading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn a foot, which means I'm going to find the foot mark, which is right there. And I'm gonna actually put the foot mark on my string line because I can get a way more accurate measurement that way than trying to estimate where it wants to be with the metal, if that makes any sense. You good? Yep, and now we're gonna correspondingly burn a foot on our side, we're at 29.4. That's right. You like that? I love it. There? Yep, okay. Good job, guys. Let's go back here and do the same. That's right. Say when, Jordan? When. Okay. Perfect. Money. Man, we're killing it, guys. All right, guys, we got the right side of the building laid out with this string. 28 foot, 4 inches over there is the left-hand side of the building with another string. Our next step is to put the front string on, representing the front of the garage. Our challenge is we've got this mark on our dry line. Remember, we put the dry line on there as a reference for our property line because the survey referenced the fence, and the fence isn't straight. We needed a straight reference line so our building is parallel to that property line, right? It's kind of confusing, but this is our reference. And this little mark right there, that's the distance from the street of our building. So our challenge is, how do we transfer that mark that's three feet in the air, all the way over to our string here, about four feet away and a lot lower? Well, we're gonna show you. All right, we have our line laser set up over here in the dirt, pointing towards the fence, and it is square to our dry line. How I, could you possibly know that? Well, I got my drywall square. I put it against the dry line here, and then this blade, obviously, it's 90 degrees to this blade. It lines up right here. We made a mark on our batter board, so check this out. I don't know if you can see it, but there's the laser on my hand right behind the black mark on our dry line. It's hard to see, but it is there. Okay, and then it's behind the mark we just made on our batter board. You can actually see it right there. And now what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna make a mark on our white line, the same point. Here, Rad, can you do that? Of course. It's okay if you mark my hand. All right, oh, there you go. Perfect, and that's the corner of our building. Really? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, now that we got this corner done, we're gonna pull a tape 32 feet back, make the same little black mark on our string for the right side of the building, 32 feet. That's how deep our structure is. And then we're gonna use those two corners and a little bit of the math, you know what I'm talking about, to get that corner perfect. What if I were to say that I don't know what you're talking about? You go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yep. I feel good about that. Yep. All right, gang, I said we're gonna use math. Now, I'm in the minority because I love math, and so does Jordan just because he's my son. True. So we're gonna break it down for you. We're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. It's simply a three, four, five triangle. I have one drawn right here on this box. If this leg of the triangle is three, and if this leg of the triangle is four, and that's a right angle, 90 degrees, this one's always gonna be five, right on the money. And that goes back to our A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now this works regardless of what their numbers are. This could be three millimeters, four millimeters, or five millimeters. It could be 30 light years, 40 light years, or 50 light years. We're just gonna plug in our pad dimensions. We're at 28 foot four this way, 32 feet this way. But we have to convert all that to either all foot or all inches. We can't have a combination like here, 28 foot four inches, we can't have that. Gotta all be the same. So we're gonna multiply both of those by 12 and we come up with 340 inches on this leg and 384 on this leg. We're gonna square those, we've already done the math. 340 squared is 115,600, got it right here. 384 squared, 147, 456, got it right here. We're gonna add those together, 263,056. Now we gotta take the square root of that right here. That's 512.88 inches. 
Now we have to convert that to feet because my tape measure doesn't have 512 inches on it. So we divided that by 12 and found out that 42 times 12 is 504 feet. So we're gonna be between 42 feet and 43 feet on our tape measure. Like I said, 42 times 12 is 504. We're gonna pick up our extra eight inches to get 504 plus eight is 512. Here's our eight inches. 0.88 inches is very close to 7 8 7 inch. 7 8 7 inch is 0.8, I'm sorry, yeah, 0.875. So our hypotenuse is gonna be 42 feet, eight and 7 8 inches. Let's bring those. And that's, and that's gonna go right here. Exactly. Why don't you go ahead and write that for the for the folks at home? Right here? Yeah, finish the equation. Let's bring it full circle here. 42 feet, eight and seven eighths inches. Money. All right, let's transfer those numbers to our pad and see if Pythagorean was right. You think there's an architect out there who will put that on the plans? Uh, I don't know. You know, there's so many construction apps now, most people like put it in their phone and just spits right. out a number. But I like seeing how the numbers work. Me too. Okay. All right, gang, so I'm at the front right corner of the garage. So I've got the foot mark on the Sharpie line. Dad's across the corner, and he's at that hypotenuse measurement that we just got. You looking good? Yep. You marked it? Marked. Cool. All right, so now let's come to this back corner because we have this one marked with the black Sharpie again because this is our established line, right? So I'm just going to put the one foot mark here on the black Sharpie line again, and Dad's going to pull 42, 8, and 7 eighths. Perfect. Money. And now what that gives us is two black Sharpie lines that we can now connect from this side to this side should have a perfect square. Well, and this should be 32 feet between the two marks I just made. So why don't you put a foot there mm. and let's check it mm. live on camera. Yeah. Come over here yeah, by live me, Live on Mom. camera. We're doing it live. Come See, over he here by me, Mom. Elizabeth. He loves... Big reveal. Here we go. 32 feet. I'm money. Money. Look at that. Remember, we're burning a foot. So that black mark is exactly 32 foot. Pythagorean wins again. Nerd, me too. All right, so I'm on one side and I'm putting the string right over that black Sharpie mark right there. And dad's on the other side doing the same exact thing. Okay. How you looking? I'm perfect. I'm perfect too. So he's gonna go over there and put a screw down, tie it off and then come over here and meet me, do the same thing and we'll have a perfectly square foundation gang. Now, if you wanted to, we could pull the tape from corner to corner again, but it's going to be perfect. I think we should. All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm hold under, on. I'm under the laser. All right. Perfect. Yeah? Yep, eight and seven eighths. Money. Money? Yep. No way. Oh. Nice job, bud. All right, there we go. Yeah. No way. And that works if you're doing this huge house or even an L, just break it up into right triangles and you can get anything square. Yeah. As long as it's square sides and not curves and, and uh, weird angles, but right. that's great. I'm so proud of that. Me too, it, took, it's perfect. it yeah. took us all day. It did. But hey. But we're filming and. It's our first one ever. Yep. Cool, dude. And mom's here, that always slows us down. <laughs> All right, Jordan, man, that was fantastic. I feel so good about this. Remember, now this is the outline of your slab and it's the elevation of your slab, wow. right? We got the front edge, the back edge, and the left and the right. That's a really cool visual. It and is. you were saying the entire time we were laying this, like, dude, this is massive. Yeah, imagine walking across the bridge from the second story over there or coming up the stairs into that corner into this huge room with a bathroom in the corner, kitchenette over here. You got all kind of room for exercise equipment, do whatever you want as far as the apartment layout. Right. Before you move into the main house, it's going to be epic. I and think, look at all the room ahead. in the garage downstairs, right? Well, I was just about to say yeah. that. So we're thinking about functionality. The worst thing you can do is build your own house and then be done and think, man, I wish I would have had more space in that area. Right. So just as far as a garage goes, definitely can fit two cars in here. One car for now because definitely can't buy two cars with this house build going on. But that's going to be plenty of room to house the Mustang and upstairs while I will have a living apartment up there, after we move into the main house and finish that, I'm gonna turn it into an exercise room because the dream is to wake up, the master bedroom is gonna be upstairs, walk out across the bridge into the exercise room and just be able to hit the cardio, blast some music, and it's gonna be epic. That's the dream at least. Yep. We're you making know, it happen. You know what I keep thinking about? Is that electric wall-mounted pressure washer you want. And yes. it's gonna be right here. That's right. 
pull the hose off the reel and bring it out and wash your car right there. Because now I'm doing it in your driveway because I don't have one and I leave it out all over the place. So I know you're stoked for that. Well, and that's why we made this a little bit higher. We want that water to drain off real nice. Right, and so we are nine inches above the sidewalk where the storm drain is. I think this is a great slab height, not yeah. too high where you're having a massive elevation. Yeah, and so now what we're gonna do with this string, imagine this two by four is our form. All we have to do is get it to the right elevation, the same as the string. Easy. Just kiss this edge, put our stakes in, nail it off. We're almost ready for some rebar and concrete, hard to believe. Yeah, that's our next step. Yep. It's taken us a long time. Uh, the videos are coming out five days apart because we're really just like trying to figure everything else out. Yeah, and a lot behind the scenes too. Which we're going to talk about later, but yeah. man, we, we are just getting swamped behind the scenes and we're figuring it all out, but we're going to update them as we go, but yeah. this it's is working. a W. It's totally working. So make sure your like button is square using the Pythagorean theorem, then smash it for us. Don't forget to check our website, studpack.com for merch. Best way to support the build. Absolutely. Ask a question, drop a comment, and please subscribe, and we'll see you on the very next Stud Pack video.